Hello, and welcome to the first lecture in a series of lectures I've put together to discuss the mathematical foundations of quantum mechanics. My name is Dr. Jacob Hudis. The title of this lecture is Quantum Mechanics Mathematical Foundations. It's lecture one, part A. And what we'll be discussing here is exploring group theory, the special orthogonal group SO3, and rotations in real space. The outline for this lecture is as follows. We'll start out with just some basic preliminaries, the role of matrices in quantum mechanics, real versus complex space, and Cartesian, Cartesian vector representation. Then I'm gonna take an in-depth look at the three rotation matrices in R3, which are also the generators of rotation for the group SO3. And then we'll get into the group theory essentials, which is understanding the fundamentals of group theory. And then we're gonna explore the group SO3. We'll do a comprehensive examination of its group properties. In this quantum mechanics lecture series, I use detailed examples, clear diagrams, and discussion of the meaning behind the math to fill gaps left by traditional quantum mechanics education. This is suitable for anybody from advanced high school students to physics PhD students. The series will clarify quantum concepts and support your coursework if you're enrolled in a quantum mechanics or related course. So let's start by defining the vector spaces Cn and Rn. Any n-dimensional vector lives in the space Cn or Rn consisting of all column or row vectors with n complex or n real components. As an example, the vector 4 pi, it has two real components, so it lives in space R2 and it is a column vector. This vector here, it has at least one complex component. It has three components, so it lives in space C3, and it is a row vector. The next vector lives in space C2, and it's a column vector. And the next vector lives in space R5, and it is a row vector. Now I briefly discuss the role of matrices in quantum mechanics. An n by n matrix operating on an n-dimensional vector space, denoted as C to the n, can perform various transformations such as rotation, compression, stretching, and reflection. Essentially, the matrix alters a vector within an n-dimensional vector space, transitioning it from one n-dimensional vector to another n-dimensional vector within the same space. It's easy to understand how we position an object in our three-dimensional world. First thing that we do is we define a coordinate system. It's always the first thing you do in any physics problem, by the way. And um, after that, then you can specify the location of something. For example, here's a statue, and it's at location x1, y1, z1, relative to the specified coordinate system. And if I move the statue, now it's at a new location, x2, y2, z2. In addition to representing the position of an object, it's also required to represent its orientation. And in our three-dimensional world, there are three rotational degrees of freedom. One rotational degree of freedom is rotating about the z-axis. So this would be a rotation about the z-axis. It's a little bit sloppy, but it's a rotation about the z-axis. Another rotational degree of freedom would be a rotation about the y-axis. And this is a rotation about the y-axis. And another rotational degree of freedom would be a rotation about the x-axis. And in our three-dimensional world, there are three rotational degrees of freedom. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. In this slide, I introduce the three fundamental rotation matrices in R3, each corresponding to one of the three degrees of freedom. Rx of theta rotates an object about the x-axis by some angle theta. This matrix Ry of phi rotates the object about the y-axis by some angle phi, and this matrix Rz of alpha rotates about the z by some angle alpha. Soon we will learn that these matrices are known as the generators of the group SO3, which will be explored in more detail shortly. These are the three generators of rotation. These rotation matrices, the generators of the group, can be written as the exponential of a different matrix. The rotation matrices in SO3 are the exponential map of other matrices, known as the ba basis matrices of the associated Lie algebra. The detailed derivation of the calculation linking the matrix, the matrix exponential to the three generators of rotation will occur in the next presentation. Now I want to look at an example to show you how these rotation matrices work. So imagine that we have some vector B. The vector B has 
um, 0x, 0y, and a unit of 1 in the z direction. So um, this is how you write a vector. It has an x, a y, and a z component, and b is a vector that points straight up in the z direction and it has a magnitude of 1. Now I can rotate the vector z if I want to, and I do want to. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to rotate the vector b by 50 degrees about the y-axis. How do you do that? Well, first, you take the rotation matrix Ry, and the reason you choose Ry is because I want to rotate about the y-axis. And then you replace theta with 50 degrees, because that's the angle that we're rotating by, and what you get is Ry of 50 onto the vector b is this operation here. That produces a new vector c, and this is the vector c. It has 0.766 in the x direction, 0 in the y direction, 0.643 in the z direction. And if you notice, I plotted vector c here, and you can see the vector c is just vector b rotated by 50 degrees. And that's how it works. I'm going to continue with that example. So now let's compute vector d. And vector d is going to be a vector where you rotate vector c by 30 degrees about the x-axis. So first you take vector b, you rotate vector b by 50 degrees, and then you rotate that by 30 degrees about the x-axis. So this is a rotation of 30 degrees about the x-axis. This is a rotation of 50 degrees about the y-axis. This is your original vector, and you get some new vector, vector d, which is right here. And as you can see, vector d is rotated out of the z-x plane. Now we begin group theory. On this slide, I introduce SO3, or the special orthogonal group, in three dimensions. The group, SO3, comprises of all 3x3 three three orthogonal matrices with determinant equal to 1. A determinant of minus 1 corresponds to reflection. The determinant being equal to plus 1 signifies proper rotations. These matrices represent rotations in three-dimensional Euclidean space. A matrix is orthogonal if its transpose equals its inverse. Ultimately, the group SO3 is a group of all possible rotations represented as matrices in real space R3. These three rotation matrices are known as the generators of the SO3 group. Possessing the generators of a group allows us to access any element within the group. Essentially, these generators are crucial for understanding the group and applying it to solve physics problems. Today I present the generators of SO3 without further derivation, but I want to em emphasize their significance. Mathematically, any rotation matrix in SO3 can be expressed as the product of the three generators. To adjust the orientation of an astronaut, we apply a rotation matrix from the SO3 group to the astronaut's current orientation. For example, to change from orientation 1 to orientation 2, we multiply by the matrix M1, which is constructed from the three fundamental rotation matrices Rx, Ry, and Rz. And M2 is also an element of SO3 and composed of the same rotation generators. It's a different matrix, but it is an element of the group SO3. On this slide, I discuss the four defining properties of groups. So what exactly is a group? Here's the definition. A group is a set equipped with a single binary operation that satisfies four conditions. Closure, associativity, the existence of an identity element, and the existence of an inverse element for every element in the set. Here are the four properties. Closure says the product of any two elements in the group is also an element in the group. The associativity property, the grouping of elements in the operation does not affect the result. The identity element. There exists an identity element such that for every element A in the group, A times the identity equals A. And finally, there has to be an inverse element. For every element A in the group, there exists an inverse element such that A times A inverse equals the identity. Anything that satisfies these four properties is a mathematical group. SO3 is a group, and I want to demonstrate this with an example by taking specific matrices in SO3 and showing that they satisfy the four fundamental group properties. Let's begin by demonstrating closure. Ma the matrix Ry of 50 and Rx of 30 are both orthogonal with determinant 1. These are both members of the group SO3. Recall, to rotate a vector from point B to point D, we first rotated the vector by 50 degrees about Y and then by 30 degrees about X. These two combined operations can be multiplied together to produce one matrix. This one matrix is a single matrix that when operated by vector B will take it to this location D. Closure dictates that this matrix is also a member of the special orthogonal group. 
That means the matrix must satisfy two properties. It must be an orthogonal matrix, so it has to satisfy the orthogonality condition, and it must have a determinant equal to 1. Here's the combined matrix, Rx of 30, Ry of 50. Here's the same matrix, I called it O. Below it, I took the transpose, and in fact, O, O transpose equals O transpose O equals the identity matrix, and the determinant of this matrix O is equal to 1. This is an example that demonstrates the closure property. The next two properties are relatively straightforward. The first of these is associativity. Associativity can be easily understood through an example of multiplying real numbers. Here's an example of associativity with real numbers. 2 times 3 times 4 is equal to 6 times 4. 6 is 2 times 3, and that's equal to 2 times 3 times 4, which is 2 times 12. This is an example of associativity, and it works the same way for matrices as well. In order for SO3 to be a group, it must have an identity element. The 3x3 three three identity matrix is a member of the group SO3, and of course it is an identity operator. The fourth and final property of a group is that every group must have an inverse element. For SO3, I'll look at an example with the rotation matrix about the y-axis. Ry of theta is an element of SO3. It rotates an object by theta about the y-axis. The inverse operation to this is Ry of negative theta. Here's a vector that points up in the z direction. We can rotate the vector by 50 degrees and then rotate the vector back by negative 50 degrees and we arrive at the same vector. And therefore this shows you that Ry of negative 50 is the inverse operation to Ry of 50. To find the inverse of a rotation matrix, replace theta with negative theta, which reverses the rotation. Alternatively, the inverse of rotation matrix can be obtained by transposing the matrix. Here's an example, Ry of theta is this matrix. The inverse operation would be placing, would replace theta with negative theta, utilizing that cosine is an even function, and sine is an odd function. Cosine of negative theta is cosine of theta. Sine of negative theta is sine of negative theta. And as you can see, the transpose of the original matrix is the same matrix you get if you take theta and replace it with negative theta. All right, so here's a recap of lecture one, part A. A group consists of a set with binary operations that adheres to closure, associativity, identity, and inverse. The group SO3 includes all 3D rotations represented by 3 by 3 orthogonal matrices with a determinant of 1. SO3 pertains to real space rotations, meaning its matrices have real number entries. The special orthogonal group in three dimensions, denoted as SO3, forms a group under the operation of matrix multiplication. Understanding a group's generators is crucial. They determine the group's structure. Every element of a group can be expressed through the generators. Each element of SO3 can be expressed as a product of its three fundamental generators. I have that down here. R is an element of SO3, and these are the three fundamental generators. By the way, every element of any group can be expressed as a product of its n fundamental generators. In real three-dimensional space, the count of generators for rotations is given by n times n minus 1 over 2, which for n equals 3 yields three generators, and this formula will be discussed in more detail on the next presentation. I hope you join me for part for lecture B, where I go into a more detailed explanation of the group generators, and more importantly, I derive the, gr the group generators from the matrix exponential of the basis Lie algebra. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. H. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis.